There's still room at the cross for another heavy burden to be left by a weary passerby. There's still hope for the cause, for a loving God is waiting to restore to you the joy you felt inside. There's still time to decide that the Father really loves you and is true. He'll never leave your side. No matter what you've heard, you can believe His word. There's still room, there's still hope, there's still time. God's word has been revealed for all to hear. Jesus loves you, He cares. So when the storms of life are drawing near, There's still room at the cross for another heavy burden to be left by a weary passerby. There's still hope for your cause, for a loving God is waiting to restore to you the joy you felt inside. There's still time to decide that the Father really loves you and is true. He'll never leave your side. No matter what you've heard, you can believe His word. There's still room, there's still hope, there's still time. You may wonder if the Lord is looking on. Can he comfort my heart? There's room for your burden at the cross. Lay it down where you are. There's still room at the cross for another heavy burden to be left by a weary passerby. There's still hope for your cause for a love. you felt inside there's still time to decide that the father really loves you and it's true he'll never leave your side no matter what you've heard you can believe his word there's still room there's still hope there's still time no matter what you've heard you can believe his word Amen. Good to see you at the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. You happy? Smile. Tell your face you're happy. Amen. Let us know you're happy. Show some joy of the Lord this morning. Been a good week. Appreciate the Lord and His goodness. And uh, appreciate the good, the good uh, Bible study we've had this week. Uh, many of you couldn't come, and I hate that. You can go on to the Facebook, and you can go back and listen to those sermons uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, where he deals with the King James Bible. It is of utmost importance for you to know that your King James Bible is the Word of God, and he gives you a lot of helps on there to understand what you need to know about the other versions that are out there. And uh, it, is, it is a great study. You are not going to regret sitting and listening about 45, 55 minutes um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday each night that he delivered that to us, and it was great. I want to encourage you, remind you of missions. Uh, if you put your missions given in an envelope, mark it missions. It'll go into our missions program, and we can support missionaries to get the Word of God out in the areas that we can't go. If you can't go, and since you can't go, help someone else that can. Amen? So be part of our missions work program here. Right now we've got 11 missionaries, and we need to increase that greatly, so... 
Uh, pray about what the Lord would have you to do. Each missionary here, we support $50 a month, and uh, I support many of those myself, and others are helping in the mission program, and it's a great program. The Lord will bless you greatly for being much about missions. Do you all know who God's plan for the first missionary was? Jesus. Before the foundation of the world, it was settled that Jesus would come to this land and bring the message of God. He left his father's home there in heaven. He left the throne of God and came here to be a missionary and tell us about the gospel. Amen. So it was preset. He would be the, be the missionary to carry the message, and there have been many others since then. So be part of that if you can. Also, let me mention singers and sound folks. We're going to meet on the 23rd at 7 p.m. Not this Monday, but next Monday at 7 p.m. I'll have you some supper prepared, and we're going to meet and discuss some things about the singing and the sound program, try to help us in that area. So next Monday, not tomorrow, but next Monday, 7 p.m. the 23rd. So if you can, be here singers and sound guys, and we'll, we'll discuss some things, try to help it uh, to be better for our people. Amen. That's what we're here for. Amen? Amen. Amen. God good, ain't he? Amen. Amen. You ought, to, you ought to praise him just for being good to us and being born in America. You could have been born somewhere else and never heard the gospel. Wouldn't that be awful? Mm, not get to go to church. Amen. And I thank the Lord for that. Somebody set it up here a while back. I don't know who orchestrated it, but they called September the 15th uh, back to church or back uh, to the Lord's house Sunday. Many had gotten out. Many had not gotten back in uh, from the COVID epidemic that we went through and uh, having to do uh, uh, home church and, and online services. And it's a call back to encourage folk to get back to the house of the Lord uh, you know, I like talking to my wife on the phone. We've even done FaceTime. But I'd much rather be in the presence of her where we can hold hands and, and have a little better uh, relationship. Say amen right there. So it is with the Lord. This is the Lord's house. He set this place apart so you could come and worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. We're glad you're here. We're going to sing a song. After we pray, and uh, we'll get on with our service this morning. Good to have you here. Thank you all for being here. I'm glad you're here. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning. We are grateful. We're thankful for the privilege to be at the house of the Lord. Thank you for each and every one that's here. I pray that God, you'd minister to our hearts. Lord, you know the needs. Lord, you know the anxieties. You know the hindrances. You know the hurts that we're all dealing with today. I pray that God should have your will and you'd help and you'd strengthen. For those that have afflictions, I pray that God should touch greatly. For those that cannot be with us today, Lord, you know their needs and I pray that you'd be with them and you'd minister to their bodily needs and help them that they might be able to be back with us. So we pray that you'd be with the afflicted and help them. And then, Lord, for those that could be here but they're not, please help them see uh, how they hurt your heart and hurt our hearts by not being in our presence. And I pray that, God, you'll draw them unto you and help them to get back to the house of the Lord. Thank you for those that's tuned in with us, Lord, that cannot be here. And I pray that, God, you'd bless and meet their needs. Help us, Lord, in our song and in the sermon today that you get the honor, you get the glory, you get the praise, that sinners will be saved and the saints of God will receive strength. We'll thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's all stand and sing good and loud for Jesus. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I, love lifted me. Yes. 
so true, and my sober song, faithful loving service to do him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. He will lift you by His love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, heroes and will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be His saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Pray for the ladies while they sing. Some 
sweet day. I'm going there to stay. Press on, it won't be very long. It won't be long. Fight on, wounded soldier. Hold on. I'm ready to move to heaven, to a land that's fair and bright, where there is perfect peace in that everlasting light. Jesus is gone to build for me a mansion there I know. The next time that you see me, I may be living in my heavenly home. The next time that you see me, maybe on streets of gold. The next time that you see me, I may be wearing a brand new robe. Maybe kneeling at his feet. Or shaking his nail-scarred hand The next time that you see me I may be living in glory land You may come to visit me And knock upon my door You may not get an answer I won't be living there anymore For I'm just here for a short while Then I'll soon be gone For the next time that you see me I may be living in my brand new home The next time that you see me Maybe on streets of gold The next time that you see me I may be wearing a brand new robe Maybe kneeling at his feet Or shaking his nail-scarred hand The next time that you see me I may be living in glory land I may be kneeling at his feet or shaking his nail-scarred hand. The next time that you see me, I may be living in glory land. Will there be a next time when I need some mercy? Will grace be sufficient? Oh, how will I know the next time my heart is broken? Will it be me? Just go back to the morning. 
moment he saved me I just go back to every prayer he's answered for me then I don't have to worry about my next blessing the past is a promise I'll have all that I need did he deliver Moses did he comfort Elijah was David a part of this promise Did God's son rise out of Judah? Did he walk up Gagatha? The past holds the power of his promise to me. I just go back to the moment he saved me. I just go back to every prayer he's answered for me. Then I don't have to worry about my next blessing. The past is a promise. I'll have all that. he holds to it and I'm thankful that I'm his child this morning I'm thankful that I can look back at my past and see where he's brought me from and I'm thankful that he knows the direction that I'm going all I have to do is follow Amen. Thank the Lord. Find your place in Isaiah chapter 55 this morning, if you would, please. Isaiah 55. Page 761, if you're carrying an old Schofield. Others will be there close by. Isaiah chapter 55. The Bible says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. 
Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander of the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he that hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, uh, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as heaven and uh, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your thoughts, and my my way. Let me read that right. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down. And the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which it I please, and it shall prosper in that thing whereunto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and shall be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come, upon, uh, shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and that shall be to the Lord for a name and for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Father, help me, I pray, as we deliver the thoughts that we feel you've placed in our heart for today. May thy will be done. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, there's much in this passage that I want to share with you. I, I, I look at passages often and remind uh, myself of many in these, in these passages. Like this particular chapter has several what we call classic verses or very, very... Uh, very much quoted verses. Uh, when you look through this, verse number six says, "Seek ye the Lord while he may be found." We've we've heard that quoted many times. We've we've heard verse number eight: "For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways," saith the Lord. And then verse number eleven, uh, where it speaks of His words shall not return void. So we've heard these classic verses many times uh, as they've been. Uh, used in sermons throughout the days and to encourage folks and to enlighten folks of things. Uh, it's good when we get into a chapter like this and begin to uh, dig out all we can get of it. There's much in this passage. I like the way the Lord lays things out for us to remind us as he does here in his call for us to come unto him. He, he says, come and get you some water, come get you some wine, milk, these things that are necessary and they're free. He says, it's not with money. See, the Lord offers unto us free salvation. These things that he has paid for, our peace, our joy, all these things that's in this chapter, he paid for for us. It's free. He wants you to come and to enjoy it. So when you study out in this chapter, there's some, several things I want to I want to lay out first, and then I've got just a couple of simple points I want us to see out of this uh, this morning as we look in this passage. First, I want us to look, verse number one, notice he says come. Notice that he, he wants us to come unto him, or can I use the word return? He wants us to return to him. 
As I mentioned previously, this is a Sunday that's been set aside for a, a return into the house of the Lord or, or a call back to the house of the Lord. For a lot of folks, it's been out for some time. Uh, the COVID has had folks out through all these uh, different seasons we went through with it. And, and uh, I, I'm thankful and hopeful that in the future, a lot of folks that have been out will get back into the house of God where they need to be. They, they need what God has. And I'm going to deal with that thought this morning on the reward of returning to the Lord. That's where we're headed. The reward for returning to the Lord. Now in verse 1 he talks about come or return to him. And this is talking about getting back to that place which is the best. That place where we visited first. Miss Judy mentioned a little bit ago about salvation and her experience with the Lord. You know that's, that's that place where we got to know the Lord uh, in the intimate way as our personal Savior. We confessed ourselves a sinner and asked him to save us. Uh, what a glorious time. And you need to visit that in your heart and mind often. At least the devil try to steal that away from you. So that's a good thing to, to think on or to muse on. Well, then when we drop down into verse number 6, he talks about seeking the Lord. Can I use this word chase the Lord? I mean, you ought, to, you ought to go after the Lord as if you was trying to chase him down. We ought to have that hunger and thirst in our soul to catch the Lord, to, to go after him in such a way that we've got to have him. We're in a time where folks don't think they need much of him. You know, I'm doing all right. I can sit here at the house and do whatever. I can, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm okay. Well, wait till the trials come. Wait till the valleys come and see what happens then. You're going to need the Lord. It'd be better to be in good, close communion with him before they hit. So you've got his protection. So you see that, that chase after the Lord or, or reach for. Do you have a hunger in your soul today for the Lord to where you're actually, you come this morning reaching for the Lord, reaching to get a hold of Him, reaching to get closer to Him? That's a need in our lives. You see the call in verse number 6 there where, where we're, we're calling on Him. Call upon Him while He was near, while He is near. Boy, how terrible could that be to call and Him not be near? How terrible it would be to, to call for our Lord, for our shepherd, for our Savior, to call for our helper, to call for our comforter and him not be near. If you'll stay near him, he'll always be near. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so we need to stay near. But then there is, there is that where he speaks about the wicked to forsake his way. We need to cast away. We need to get some things away from our life. Uh, the old terminology is repent. There's some things that, that we need to get out of our lives that has taken a place that is, that is hindering our fellowship, that's hindering our walk with the Lord. We need to get some of that stuff out of our life where we've got time for the Lord. Amen? Uh, God help us in this computer age. We got one on our side or in a pocketbook. We got one laying in the car. We got one everywhere. And I, I mean, we got to have computers everywhere. About everything in this world now functions off of some kind of a computer. You like that air conditioner? Computers working it. Like your washer and dryers, computers operate them. All this stuff, your car, you go out there and sit down in that car, that's a big computer. Computer tells the motor to run. Tells, we're in a computer age. We need to get a little bit back to some old-fashioned things. Uh, I think, I know I'm getting older because I'm starting to want the older things back. Simplicity of life. We've, got, we've gotten to the place that all this other stuff is it's got our mind and our, our hearts and we're so stuck, we can't hardly go nowhere. I went out and got in the truck this morning and started to leave, and I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I ain't got my phone. My goodness, I can't go to, I can't go to church without my phone. The only reason I went back for it truthfully is so that if she needed something or somebody else needed something, that's really the reason <coughs> that I went back for my phone. So we see the call. We, we, we see the casting away of things. But then he says in verse number 7, let him return unto the Lord. And I want us to consider that. I want us to review. Now, please, please, will you do me a favor this morning? 
will you be personal with God? Don't worry about who's sitting beside you. Don't worry about who's watching you. Don't worry about the preacher's eyes. Where are you with the Lord? Consider, do you need to make a return unto the Lord? Are you as close to Him? I'll tell you a good way of telling it. How holy is you living? I, I remember when I first got saved and, and, and the Lord began to work in my life and I began to grow up. I was a little fella and I got saved. I was only seven and a half years old and how that I loved the things of the Lord. And then as I grew and got older, I began to have that draw. And, 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 and that, that, that love for the Lord, I mean, I, I, I had... Um, dedicated my life to God at 17 years old. I wanted to go wide open for God. I wanted to be all I could. <coughs> Folks was telling me I was crazy, that it wouldn't last, and I'd, you know, all these kind of things that they tell you to discourage you. You know why they do that? It's because they ain't where they need to be. My preacher did not discourage me in that. My preacher didn't say, now, boy, you ain't going to last. That, you ain't going to make it. No, my preacher said, hey, man, go, go, go. You with me? The ones that's discouraged you is because they're not where they need to be either. Amen. So you just sort of ignore that and go on with Jesus, right? When you, when you, when you think about this return, Jacob had several major episodes in his life, several situations in his life, and he talks about those who are returning to Bethel. You know, there's, 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 there needs to be a place in your life where you met with the Lord a place of salvation. There needs to also be a place of surrender. Salvation is you know you're going to go to hell and you believe Jesus died for you and you know God loves you enough to save you and you put your faith and trust in Him. There will come a place in your life later to where you will totally surrender and you'll say, whatever you want, Lord, is what I want. You got a place like that in your life? Regardless of what my desires are, I want my desires to be as your desires, Lord. There needs to be a place like that in your life. Have you got away from it? Maybe today you need to make a return. I'm going to show you the reward in returning here in just a minute. I want us to consider that. Consider where you belong. Now, I do a lot of alliteration in my messages so that I can remember my points. That's part of it. And so you can remember the points. Well, he was using A's today or he was using M's today. And you can go through and you can remember the outline. And it helps you to remember the text. It helps you to remember. I'm not going to do that in the rest of the message. The reason I'm not going to do that is I do not want to take away from the words that is used in the text. I don't want to try to find a synonym because you cannot find synonyms for the words that I'm going to draw upon in this text. There's not synonyms for it. First thing I want us to see about being rewarded in our return is, look with me in verse number 7. He says in the latter part, he will have mercy upon him. There's not a synonym in the dictionary that you can use that matches what mercy means. There's not one. See, when you look at the definition of mercy, it's that benevolence, it's that mildness or tenderness of heart which disposes a person to overlook injuries or to treat an offender better than he deserves. There's no other word that I can use there. Mercy's mercy. You understand what's going on in this text. The Lord is talking with the nation of Israel. They have been from God. They have been in captivity. They've not been where they should be in serving the Lord and he's talking about them and their return. And listen, they've done bad. They've served other gods. So have other people. It may not be some little golden idol. <clears throat> it, may, it may be even in the form of some leather. See, this is some folks' God, their, their money carrier. <clears throat> That's some folks' God. They're more concerned... And they worship their dollar more than they worship the Lord. Boy, y'all done got stoved up on me quick. This is going to be a good morning, it looks like. we just lay that to the side. It's going to be hard work for the preacher today. 
See, we need, we need to understand that the God that we're coming to is a God that has mercy for us. Hey, this, is, this is, you know, oftentimes folks are in fear of coming back to God. It's like a kid that's done something wrong. He don't want to go get around dad. Because he knows dad's probably fixing to tear him up when he figures out what he done wrong. Now, that's the way I was raised. Don't know about y'all. I, I, I was whooped B times. That's a Bible word. That means a lot. I, 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 Mama about near had to plant another hickory bush for me. She wore that thing out. I mean, I was going getting hickories every day. It was something else now. I got bunches of those. And I'm glad they made these cheaper belts these days. My daddy had a belt that was about an inch wide and an inch thick. That rascal was almost square. And I'm telling you, it would bite up in your hide something fierce. When you've done some wrong, you're sort of scared to come back. I want you to understand that when God makes a bidding, when God makes a call to you, God makes a request for you to come back, it's for mercy. God has much mercy for us. What a God we serve. Psalm 103 verse 8 said, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. I need that. I, I, you go read Psalm 136 and every one of those verses ends with, for his mercy endureth forever. That means I can't wear it out. That means I can't use it all up. God has got mercy. And when I will return, he's got mercy waiting on me. Come back to him. He's got mercy. Hey, listen to me. He'll whoop you going away. He'll love you coming back. Are you sure about that, preacher? Y'all read Luke 15 in the last while? That's a good picture of the Father in heaven. That boy done wrong. That boy abused all that his dad had gave him, wasted it in, in, in wrongful living. But when he come home, his father had mercy for him. That prodigal son gives us a great example of our father's mercy. See, by law in the, those days, by law... That wayward child, that wrongful living son would have come to his father, offered himself unto him, and the father would have stepped upon his neck to kill him. That was law of a rebellious son. What did his father do? He bent down there and kissed him. That's mercy. See, what God is showing us in the story of the prodigal son, he's showing us that he's a God that is full of mercy. When he calls you for a return, he's wanting to show you mercy. That's the reward of returning his mercy. Let me give you another one. He also has a pardon. Look at verse number 7 again. He ends that with, for he is, will abundantly pardon. That means he ain't just giving you a pardon. He's giving you a great big pardon. Y'all know what a pardon is, don't you? Now, it may not be much for y'all because y'all probably didn't do much wrong. I know y'all little angels and all. But when God pardoned me, it's a pretty good sized fire that had to burn up all of the record for my wrongdoings. But when he pardoned me, he did that. You might remember something, but he don't. He chose to not remember it because he gave me a full bill of pardon. In the legal term today, we use the terminology pardon. And what that means is someone is full-fledged guilty and convicted of something they did wrong. And the power that be that has that power can issue a pardon and cleanse them from all that wrong and it not be any harm unto their life. See, God is abundant in a pardon. If you'll come home, he'll forgive you and pardon you as if you had not done the wrong. You believe that, preacher? Well, did I mention Luke 15 to you? Do you remember that prodigal son that when he come home, that prodigal son makes his return and the father forgives him and shows him mercy as he returns, kisses him on the neck, and then to prove it even further that he'd give him a pardon, what did he do? He reestablished him right back to the position that he should have been had he stayed. 
He said, hey, boys, put a robe on him. Put some Reeboks on him and put a ring on him. That ring is a significant thing because it is the insignia for the family. He's now being treated as if he had not done any wrong. That's why the elder brother got so mad. He'd stayed home, stayed true, and stayed faithful to everything, and he got all mad and been out of shape and upset with the situation because that prodigal son went off and done and enjoyed all that righteous living. Now he comes home and he's restored right back where he was. He's sitting at the table eating steak. The brother mad, he stays outside. I'm not preaching the prodigal son, but that's a good, that's a good illustration for the mercy of God and the pardon of God goes on, when you look at these things that he's given out, I mean, when you go through here, I marked them, highlighted them with my orange marker so that uh, I could see them easy. He's given the water, he's given the wine, he's given food. Her soul shall live forever. They have an everlasting covenant. Uh, got mercy, got a pardon. Verse number 12, for he shall go out with joy. Joy's returned. Boy, people need that today. You see so many people that's got the mully grubs. Y'all know the mully grubs around here. I've taught you that. And uh, I'm glad that Dr. Kenny Baldwin also taught you about the mully grubs. I don't know if Webster knew about them because he don't have them. I mean, but it's a true thing. It's those folks that, I mean, you give them a hamburger and, and, and they just can't be happy with it. You know, they're going to find something wrong with everything. Mully grubs, complainers. What's wrong is not about all these other products and these other things. There's something wrong. They ain't happy with nothing. You want your joy back? You want, you want a place in life to where you've got joy regardless of what's going on out there? Return to the Lord. You can be close to Jesus and have joy unspeakable and full of glory regardless of your circumstances. You believe that? Well, yeah, because I believe my Bible. And see, there's some fellas that goes through some terrible times throughout these scriptures, but yet they got joy. You explain to me how a man that's got blood beat out of his back, it's running down his back. He's locked in stocks and bonds. He's not had a decent meal in forever. And he's sitting in the slime pit the sewage pool while he's singing Amazing Grace. I call that joy. You know, you know, we oftentimes, if a thermostat ain't right, we ain't right. I don't know why in the world a preacher won't turn that down where I can be comfortable in here while another doesn't say, we should turn it up so I wouldn't preach to death. And we get so all bit out of shape with every little thing. You know, my goodness, my car didn't ride right this morning. You got a little bump, but you rode in the car running on a mule. You didn't have to walk. Of course, you wouldn't have walked. You ain't about to walk to church. I ain't about to call somebody else to come and help me today. What's wrong? You don't have your joy. See, if you've got that joy in there, you can go through these things, troubles, trials, tribulations, Hiccups, hang-ups, hurts, and still have the joy of the Lord. See, Jesus said that he would give us that joy. John 15, 11 says, These things have I spoken to you that, your, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. See, he wants you to run on a full tank. I believe it, Brother Goosby preached on running on a full tank. Years ago here, he preached on running on a full tank. A lot of folks just fell below empty. We need to get that joy back up. How are you going to get your joy back up? Get back to where you belong with Jesus. Make that return because God's got a reward. He's going to give you joy back. Not only do we see joy, but we see peace. Verse number 12. He says, and, led, and be led forth with peace. Peace, Webster says, in a general sense, is the state of quiet or tranquility. Freedom from disturbance or agitation. Peace. In the midst of troubles, in the midst of storms, you can have peace. Y'all remember 
when Jesus went on the boat with the disciples, was he not in the same storm they were? Yet he was laying in the hull of the boat asleep. That's peace. He wasn't a bit worried about the storm because he's the storm controller. He was at peace. See, he can give us peace that in the midst of our storms, though the storm still rages, there is peace with the Lord. You got peace. You need some peace? Is your world all agitation and aggravation and all these other adjectives that we use to describe a horrible time? You can find peace in the Lord. There's more folks today that's having anxieties and troubles. And I understand chemical issues with the body. I understand There's other problems that can be present with the body. I'm not being ugly with that. But a lot of folks can have peace with the Lord. Amen. I understand. Bodily troubles can cause all this kind of an uproar. I I listened to one of the great preachers talk about when he had the onset of Parkinson's, how it so troubled his whole body and his mind and everything. And he is in such a spirit of agitation. I understand those onsets. But God still wants to bring you to a place of peace if you'll let him help you. Then it mentions not just the peace. Now, John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace is found in Jesus, real peace. world always offers a pseudo of godly stuff. The devil has a copycat for everything that God does right. He copycats in our own. Watch him in that. So we, we receive peace. We receive singing. Verse number 12, he talks about how that uh, the hills shall break forth unto you in singing. I thought about that singing, and I thought about the children of God where they were in captivity. In Psalm 137, verse 4, they were speaking of their captivity, and they was requesting of them to sing. And they said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? We're in a strange land. This is not our home. We're going to be, home's heaven for us, folks. You saved home is in heaven. This is a strange, we're pilgrims and strangers in this land. But we can still have a song. God can still give us a song even in a strange land. There's a lot of folks that got a song and lost it. See, the troubles and trials and and problems that we deal with in this life, if, you're, if we're not careful, the devil will steal them away. And we'll end up in a captivity kind of setting to where we don't got our song no more. You want your song back? Return to the Lord. There's a reward in returning to the Lord. He'll give you that song back. Verse 12 also speaks of, of the trees and how that they clap their hands. You know, the Bible speaks of clapping hands in Psalm 47 verse 1 says, a psalm for the sons of Korah says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I've heard preachers, Hey, you ain't supposed to be clapping in church. You're supposed to say amen or hallelujah or glory. And that's the praise we're supposed to. Well, I'm sorry, buddy, but you need to go back and read your Bible a little bit. It's okay to clap, too. That's part of it. Unless you're going to withdraw Psalm 47, 1, and destroy our Bible. But it says there, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, shouting to the Lord with voice of triumph. Now, I like a good hearty amen and a hallelujah and glory and all that good stuff, but a good clap every once in a while is okay too. Amen? Get your clap back. Get your, get your, get your happiness back. Get your singing back. Get your joy back. Get your peace back when you return to the Lord. And you receive fruitfulness. Verse number 13 talks about how that the thorns will be gone and, 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 and the good stuff will grow. God wants you to be fruitful. He didn't design you to not be fruitful. You know what he done to a tree and he walked by that tree and it wasn't fruitful? He condemned it. And he said, wait, 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 wait. Let us prune it and let's see what it does next year. See, he looks for fruitfulness. Whether it's 30-fold, 60-fold, or a hundredfold, he wants fruitfulness out of your life. And sometimes he'll put you through a pruning process. You know, that's clipping away some dead parts or some things in your life that's not profitable to you. He sort of has to clip some things away. But he wants us fruitful. 
See, when you study, when you study Isaiah 55, the Lord is, is given the picture of returning to him. He says, return unto him. Let him return. And he's got a pardon. He's got mercy. He's got peace. He's got joy. He's got singing. He's got clapping. He's got fruitfulness. It's rewarding to get back where you need to be with the Lord. Can I, can I remind you again of the prodigal son? He got back to the father's house, and as he said, let me just be as a servant. And the father said, oh, no, 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 no. You're coming in the house and sitting at your place at the table. There was a place reserved for him because he was a son. He said, you come on in here and sit at the table where you belong. See, God wants us to come into the peace of his house and have the joy of his house. He wants us to have all these things that we're supposed to have as a child of God. And what we got to do is return to that place. See, oftentimes we see other things that we think is going to be good for us. We see other things that's going to be blessings for us. We see other things that look delightful to us. And in turn, what it is, we've been deceived. Rather than giving to us and helping us, they take away from us. Folks get away from God, they lose their song, they lose their peace, they lose their joy, they lose their clap. They lose these things that they have for the Lord. What God wants you to do is return because he's got mercy and pardon. First thing he mentions there is come, come. he will have mercy upon you and, and, and to our God, talk about return to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. I know, as I mentioned, sometimes we've done wrong. We're sort of scared to come into the presence of our parents or meet and face those to which have authority over us for what we're doing, whether it be a job or something to that effect. Sometimes we're fearful to come and face that. I tried to instill this in my children. If they come to me, with their wrong. I showed mercy and grace. If I catch them in it and have to deal with them and bring them to me, they know what judgment is. Why did I do that? I learned from the Lord. Mercy, grace, pardon, joy. And it's amazing how well that works. See, God knows how to make it work best. Listen to me. If you're not where you need to be with the Lord today, I'm not here to bring down condemnation on you. I'm here to encourage you. Come back to the Lord. Get back where you need to be. For he has mercy and a pardon. He'll forgive you. Forget what you've done. Now, you're going to be plagued with it in your brain. You'll think about things. But listen, God will completely forgive you and pardon you of that if you come get that thing right. As he says in verse number 7, forsake it, repent of it, get away from it, get away from it. Get back to where you need to be with the Lord. I wonder this morning how many will be honest. We have this time of altar call and we have this time of prayer. You'll be honest with yourself first. Be honest with yourself. Are you where you're supposed to be or where you can be with the Lord today? Or do you need to return to that place of peace, joy, mercy, and pardon that God has for you? Let's all stand. Father, I beg you to take your word and use it for your glory. I ask you to help many today to be honest with themselves and honest with you. Take that step today that they need to take to get back where they can and should be with you. Father, I know you want to offer them mercy and pardon. I know, Father, that you want to offer them grace. I know you want to give them their joy back, their song back. And I pray, Father, today you'll help them to come and make that step of faith knowing that you're awaiting to forgive and help them today. I pray thy will be done. Lord, would there be one that's not saved here today? I pray that, God, you'll help them to see that you offer to them that same mercy, that same forgiveness, that same pardon, if they'll just come and call on you. I pray, God, that you'll have your will now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Altar's open. You need to come. Come on.
<laughs> you know the truth. Come on. You know what you need to do. No shame in coming to Jesus. No shame. No shame. The shame will be if you don't. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming <coughs> home. The paths of sin. You come, we'll let you alone. You can pray, talk to the Lord yourself. If you need some help, I'll be glad to pray with you. I'll be right here. Be glad to pray with you. If you need some help with the Bible, we'll show you scriptures. You need to know Jesus as your Savior for the first time. Be glad to take the Bible and show you. You just mind the Lord. Are you where you can be with the Lord today? How's your song? How's your joy? How's your peace? How's your fruitfulness? That lets you know sort of where you're at with the Lord. How is it with you today? I've wasted many precious years. Don't waste no more. Now I'm coming home. I now. Jesus, he loves you. He's got plenty of mercy. He'll just come. My soul is sick. My heart is sore. Now I'm coming home. My strength message help you today, encourage you, strengthen you. That's our goal. That's our desire to get us all back where we need to be close to the Lord. Amen. Back tonight at six o'clock. If you can, come be with us. Have some singing and some preaching. Thank you for coming today.